Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you've been following along, then you know that I've been slowly chipping away at our bedroom one DIY at a time. If you're new here, hello, my name is Tina. I'm a DIYer and also the co-owner of Studio Calm where I share my artwork with you. And so far in this room, I've built my headboard. I've also done some Ikea hacks last week for some decor pieces for around the room. And originally when we were at Ikea, I was on the hunt for some nightstands that I could flip, but there were none of Available. We even looked at stores around and they won't be available until next month So I went back to the drawing board and I looked at my Pinterest to see what else I could create for the space And then I saw this gorgeous marble plinth end table I just thought it looked so good and I think it would contrast really nicely against the olive green However, it is totally out of my price range because they are thousands of dollars And also it's not that functional for me because I like to have a lot of storage and since it's a plinth all you really have is the tabletop and nothing underneath to kind of hide your junk that you usually want to hide on your nightstand. So I decided I'm going to try my hand at DIYing this and making it look really luxe but also way more affordable. And I'm doing it all from scratch so I'm somehow going to freehand the marble design and try my best to make this as realistic as possible. I'm actually a little bit nervous about this but I watched a ton of videos so hopefully it will turn out good. I also want to get some paint on the wall so we're going to do that in this video and also fix this headboard because there are a few things that I still need to do to complete it. <gasps> oh my god that dog's so cute! I'm going to come up with a game plan and then brainstorm a little bit and show you guys how we're going to make it happen. <laughs> I drew everything out, so I think I have a solid game plan. This is the basic shape that I'm going for. It is very modern and also very functional because here is where we're gonna put our phone and any little items that we want to kind of hide in a cubby. And I was thinking it'd be really cool if we ever wanted it to look like a solid piece, we could just turn it and then hide the cubby. So that is kind of my thought process. And I have my measurements right here. So you can see this is how I drew the cuts, but ultimately I I want it to look like a single piece so that it looks a little bit more like marble. And I think the building part is gonna be pretty easy. It should be a beginner friendly build, but what I'm nervous about is making it look like marble because this can go wrong really quickly. So for the actual build, I'm using these edge glued panels. These have been my favorite thing to build with lately because they are solid wood, they are relatively inexpensive, and they also come pre-cut, so it's a little bit more manageable for smaller builds like this. And I like that this is pretty thick, so this is an inch thick, and since it is made of just solid wood pieces together, you don't have to edge band it or do any extra work, which I think is just way better than using plywood. And I get these from Lowe's, and I think each one of these were about $19. Okay, so I'm gonna get my circular saw out, get all the cuts done, and then put in a bunch of pocket holes. I'm cutting down these nightstands to fit my headboard basically, but for my dimensions, I'm basically making them 23 inches tall, and they're gonna be 20 inches across and 12 inches deep. I'm actually so glad that Ikea didn't have those original tables that I wanted because now I get to make something that I love even more than I had originally planned for the space. So this is definitely a happy accident and if there's ever a DIY that you're doing and it just doesn't go accordingly, just know it might be for a good reason. How do you feel about this project so far? So far it's going pretty well I think. I'm just trying to figure out the right height for the actual table because there's so many different answers. I'm trying to make it work as best as I can for our bed, but it's gonna turn out good. And I'm almost done with the cuts. I'm just sweating a lot. I don't know why I chose to wear a long sleeve today. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, I'm already sweating. I'm wearing shorts <laughs> and you have a sweater and apron <laughs> and jeans. I'm trying to make fall happen, but like it's really just not folly here in Southern California, so. The fall is falling. <laughs> Okay, I think I just spent like half an hour just sanding these down, making sure they're all nice and prepped. These are the sides, that is the inner shelf, this is the front side, 
and then that is the top shelf. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put pocket holes into everything and then assemble it all together. Doing a project like this is actually something that's been on my DIY bucket list. You can use so many different methods to create the marble look by hand. And I've watched so many videos of people doing this, but today we are really gonna put it to the test because I want to try it out firsthand and see if we can actually get a realistic marble look and make it look super elevated. I chose not to make a back piece for this, so it's basically going to be two side pieces, a front piece, a shelf, and then a top. Guys, I cannot believe that we made these. Like, I've done so many projects and every time I do one, I still am in disbelief of what I can make myself. These just came out so good and what's crazy is that I only spent $60 for the lumber on both of these. You can honestly leave them like this and stain or paint them. I just think they are so modern and beautiful and functional. <sighs> it still blows my mind that I'm able to make this like, what? It is all sanded down and now I'm going to add on some little furniture glides to the bottom and then just prime all of the sides and also the inside. Priming and sanding is super important because you wanna ensure that your wood is really smooth. Since I'm using wood and I'm painting over it, there is a possibility that the wood grain will show through. So if you want to avoid that altogether, I would try out this project with MDF and that is something that is super smooth. You just wanna make sure that you prime that as well. I just chose wood because I wanted to create something that was going to be super high quality and that will last through time. I've been sitting on choosing a paint color over the past couple of weeks and I swatched these three lovely beiges and after living with them on my walls, I decided that the winner is none of them. I have been going through so many different paint samples and after just sitting with it for a while, I decided I actually want to go with something a lot lighter than this. We have north facing windows in here so it gets a lot of cool light and not any warm light at all. And in the end, I still want it to be airy in here so I decided to go with something a lot lighter. So here's what I landed on. It has more of a yellow undertone and I think it will work better to bring more light in here. And we decided we're going to paint this room in sections because it's kind of a large area so we're gonna tackle the back wall where our headboard is first and then next week we'll do all of the other walls. Now we have nowhere to sleep. <laughs> where are we putting the bed? Oh wow. He's so strong. <laughs> Now I have to tape everything. You know what's great about this room? What? There are no windows that you can open, so there's no ventilation while we paint in here. I'm gonna turn on the air purifier and get the fan in here. Do you know that people put tape on the roller to get the lint off. Like they do this. Oh wait, this is the roll you hate. This is gonna be fun too. Oh no. These people do this 
and then they peel it off. Except this one's pretty smooth because nothing's coming off. And that way you have a lint-free roller. First bit of paint. <gasps> oh, there's no turning back. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good color. I already see the vision you had. Yeah, better than the beige? Oh yeah. Primer's all dry and I made sure to sand in between the coats too. And now it is time for the brown paint. So I went with this dark base, it's called Otter. I think it's gonna be the perfect base and I'm just gonna do two coats of this all around. And then after this, I'm going to test out some techniques to make this look like marble. Since we're taking apart the headboard right now, I decided I'm going to go ahead and actually put a hole in the back of one of the shelves so that we could put cords through. A lot of you guys suggested that, which is great because I totally forgot about the cords. So I'm gonna do that today. And first I have to drill a hole through the back. That way I can use my jigsaw and make a little circle or a square or whatever shape I end up doing. I wish I had one of those circle drill bits because that would make this job a little bit easier, but that's something I probably should get for the future. And after that, I'm also going to stain these so that they match the top shelf a little bit better. I think it'll definitely make it look more finished. For those asking what stain color I'm using, it's called Provincial by Verithane. I'm absolutely obsessed with it right now. I use it for the shelf in my bedroom and I also used it for our TV frame. So that's my goal for today. Let's finish up the shelves. down I'm going to try out different marbling paint techniques I've been watching so many different videos on how to do this so I want to try it out before I actually do it on the real thing so the first technique I want to try out is with a marbling spray paint so this one actually came to me broken unfortunately so I ordered this on Amazon and there was no cap on top of it so this part like cracked off but luckily it is still working but I had to order two of them so just be warned if you do order it on Amazon otherwise you can find it in person at different stores. I'll have it linked down below. But basically the tip of this makes a really cool effect where it looks like it's marble. It's almost like a scattered look and you can also twist the tip here and that will basically change the direction of how the spray comes out so you can make it really flat or you can make it really stringy. So I think I want it to be very stringy so it's kind of facing up more horizontal right now. I have a big piece of plywood that I painted the same color as my cabinets just so that I could test this out and see what I can do with this. I also grabbed another spray paint. This is more of a hammered texture, so I thought it'd be cool just to try it out and see how it looks. And then I also have some sponges and a bunch of paint brushes. So let's see what we can create with all of these different techniques. I actually saw DIY Danny using this as well as the marble spray paint. So I'm gonna try that out first. I'm gonna use this as a base layer and see how I like it. Okay, let's see. Is that anything happening? So that will be our little test. And then as it dries down, oh yes, it does have this really cool texture going on. After giving this a couple of sprays, I learned that you have to flick your wrist upwards and pull away as you're spraying, and that will give you a more organic look rather than just straight up and down lines if you just spray it across. So that's something that I definitely needed to work on, and I also noticed that this dried down really quickly. 
I waited about 10 or 15 minutes and then I was able to go on top with a watered down paint in that same brown color. And I also added in a little bit of black and this is gonna give us more dimension so that the white marble doesn't look like it's just sitting on top of the brown. This gives it more layers and I think it looks a lot closer to what I have as my reference photos. So you can see I started with the brush and then I also used a sponge and this really helped blend things in and give it a lot of texture. Now for the veining, I think the spray paint actually did a really good job, but if you wanna add more, I've seen a lot of videos using a feather to do this. I don't have a feather with me, so I used a scrap piece of thick craft paper that was basically from a piece of cardboard. I ripped it up and made a little point and using this is gonna help us create those variations in the line weight. You definitely wanna try to keep your hand as loose as possible. That where you can get more of an organic shape as you're dragging it across. I think that the hardest part of doing this is trying your best not to make it too perfect because marble is not perfect. It's sporadic and organic and you just wanna try your best to make it feel as free form as possible. After playing around, I am pretty happy with like how this is looking. I think I need to do a combination of things which is to use the spray paint to get kind of that base layer going. Then go over top with it with a watery paint. That way you get a little bit more depth and layering going on. This looks pretty similar to my inspo photos, so I'm gonna try to get it as close as I can. And going into this project, you guys know that this was the thing I was most nervous about. So being able to practice it before I do it on the real thing has honestly made me feel a lot more confident. And what's great about this is that since we are painting, you can totally just keep painting over it until you get it right. Ah, I'm so excited to actually do it tomorrow. I'm gonna call it a night for now, but I will see you guys in the morning. Okay, it is time. I have to paint the real deal today. And honestly, last night I was feeling confident, but then as I was laying in bed last night, I was thinking about the project and I was like, what if I mess up and it turns out really bad? But then I had to stop myself and think, I will get it there. I just have to keep painting over it and over it if I have to. I just have to take a deep breath and go into this with confidence. I'm gonna lay both of them down flat and then work on the front part first. And I might try to do kind of both at the same time, just so that I can do the same process to both of them. And I think it'll make them look a little bit more cohesive. So that is the game plan. Let's do this. Jumping into this project, I just really had to trust the process and also trust myself. And to give you a little bit of an idea, I think I spent around four or five hours actually just painting on the marble part. I really wanted it to be perfect, especially since I worked so hard to build the actual nightstand. I just just wanted to make sure that the final product was going to be good. And the only way it was gonna get there was just doing lots and lots of layers. So at first I did spray a ton of the marble spray paint on there, but as you can see, I just go over it with the brown and then left the parts that I actually wanted to stick out more. This makes it look so much more realistic. And after I did that first initial layer, I was able to figure out where exactly I wanted to place kind of the darker spots as well as any more veining that I wanted to kind of highlight. I've seen tons of people doing the classic white and gray marble look, but doing a brown marble like this is definitely more outside the box. It's totally different and unique to me. And I just know this is gonna look so good once we get everything in. And this color is just gonna look so gorgeous against the velvet headboard. Okay, so I just stepped away and let this dry down for a couple of hours and I'm honestly kind of shocked. I can't believe how good this looks. Okay, let me show you. Um, what? That looks so convincing. I don't even know if I should go in with like the cardboard paper and add more veining. I just love this texture so much and you can definitely tell the difference between just the spray paint, like how we have right here, and then here where we added layers and depth. Literally obsessed with this right now. Camera. This is honestly one of the best projects I've seen Tina do. I don't even think the camera does this justice. Once the top coat is on, I think it's gonna look a lot better. It gets better than this? I don't know, maybe. Or maybe it'll ruin it. <laughs> this legit looks like marble. Oh my god, I was so nervous about this. Honestly, I've been sponging for like an hour now. I should have worn gloves. <laughs> It came out beautifully, honey. Thank you. It's almost done. I can't believe how good it looks. 
doing this method definitely allowed room for error because I was able to just sand any parts down or just paint over it if I didn't feel like it matched the vibe. I've seen tons of tutorials using epoxy, but I just didn't want to use epoxy for this. It's definitely another good option, but allows less room for error and also takes a lot more patience in terms of dry time. Plus, I really wasn't sure how I was going to make it work on a piece like this that wasn't flat on a countertop. But trust me, that was definitely plan B if this wasn't going to work out. And I'm so glad that it did because you really just had to let every layer dry. That way you can kind of see what you have and adjust it until it looks right. not over this you guys i cannot believe that i just made these nightstands and i also can't believe this is our bedroom this came out so much better than i thought it could and i'm absolutely in love with it i definitely had my doubts but we pulled it through somehow and i hope you guys learned some new techniques and it feel empowered as always let me know how you think they turned out and also if i chose the right paint color because for me i think this was the perfect match to go with the headboard but we definitely have a ways to go as you guys can tell from the white wall that we have back there it's really starting to come together and I'm glad you guys are able to watch this whole journey. So this definitely isn't the final setup, but make sure you tune in for next week's video where I go over the mood board and we paint the rest of the room and get things into place. And make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on those future videos. And if you would like to see more from me, you can check me out over on our vlog channel or also over on Instagram where I post every single day. Thank you so much for watching, stay inspired, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!